This is a sine wave. And this is a triangle wave. And while they sound different, the two waves aren't as unique as they may seem. If we break it down, every sound you heard was entirely sine. It becomes pretty obvious when you listen to the sine wave again, but this time with added waves of varying frequency. This was achieved through a process known as additive synthesis, multiple signs being added onto each other to form more complex shapes. But why does this work? It's a bit strange that when something is as universally prevalent as sound, all of it is explained through sign. See, all sound is created from vibrations traveling through air molecules to reach your ear. The sound perceived by your ear is therefore influenced by the pattern of vibration. While particles can vibrate in multiple patterns, waves are commonly represented using the sine function. But why that specific function? Why not any function in the entirety of math that is periodic? What is it that makes sine waves the building blocks of sound? Well, of course, sine is actually a trigonometric function for op over height. It forms a wave due to the pattern of a circle. When a sine sound is played, these waves represent the most basic, boring, and flat oscillation. Unless you talk like an automaton, this basic tone doesn't cover every form of sound. There's something outside of frequency and amplitude that influences perceived sound. Obviously, the thing that we're missing is that particles can follow different patterns or harmonic overtones. Considering that all sine waves sound more monotonous than a trigonometry booklet, we need different patterns to represent all sound. The answer to this problem is addition. Listen to the synthesized sound of a triangular wave. Obviously, it isn't the same as a sine wave, but when we break it down, it really is just the long sum of simpler waves combining to create a new type of wave. Wait, so this is a wave? We can hear this as well. Okay, maybe a stretch to say that sine waves can make triangles, right? But it is true. As the mathematics of the Fourier series show, the addition of sine waves can create literally anything. This holds true even when the sum of waves is infinite. Therefore, every periodic shape can be created using simple sine and cosine waves. So in terms of sound, varying sine waves can be combined to make an entirely new tone. Now, it makes sense why the previous triangle wave was synthesized with nothing but sine, and also why everything you hear through your speaker is 100% sign, nothing else. If the concept is slightly strange, just remember that the entire visible spectrum can be perceived using RGB displays. Maybe it's not that interesting that sums of sign can create every shape, but when taking into account that everything you hear is made of, I find that pretty cool. So just to clarify, this means that the background music, my voice, and any sound you may be hearing is made up of the repetitive sign that you heard in the beginning. Look, I'm not a musician, but I feel like making a song using this information. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Despite how sign is a universal building block, we can still categorize three other basic shapes, these being sawtooth, square, and triangle. All of these possess their own type of harmonic overtone, and yes, they are still made of sign. So using all four waveforms, I have finally created this beautiful symphony known as Song.mp3. Enjoy. So how was the song? Damn, it's a really nice day out, don't you think? Does that mean it's good? No. There's a reason why I don't do music. Anyways, let's recap. So, every sound is achieved through an addition of sine waves. Different additions create different harmonic overtones. And these new tones can be used to create amazing sounds like the music I composed. Anyways, that's all for this video. Bye!